They called him the Diesel. Drink up that Diesel. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm. He leaned across the table and he goes, you need to get me back there. I'll make you famous. And to Riggins, good hold. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35, the 30, the 20. He's gone. He's gone. It's Rigo the Diesel. Good day and welcome to Rigo the Diesel. I am John Riggins. Larry Michael, voice of the Washington Redskins, is uh, here with me as he always is. And uh, Larry, uh, you were the MC again, right, of Coach Gibbs's uh, Yeah, the Heart to Heart Gala, which was great. Jeff Foxworthy uh, performed. I yeah. I knew Foxworthy was supposed to be entertainment. And what did he oh, get up man. and do about 20 minutes? He minutes? did about 40 minutes. Then 40? Lone Star, which is a very famous country music yeah, yeah. act, got up. And it was the most uh, entertainment that they'd had at that event, in my memory. It was a great vibe in the room. Um, raised a lot of money for some kids that need the help. Youth Home is really one of the best places on earth. Yeah, some of the residents were there. A former resident was there, gave a testimony, which didn't leave a dry eye in the house. And Jeff Foxworthy was pretty funny. Especially, what was his funniest joke? Do you his remember? funniest joke was, uh, you know, he, he was he was talking that. Is this he where, was, you know, your redneck win? Was yeah, well, no, he, he wasn't that much on the redneck stuff. But he did, he did a lot of stuff that was situational, which is relatable. Uh, one was he was on an airplane, and he pulled out the stuff, you know, magazine. And there was a story in there on how... Uh, People can pack with the carry-on for a 10-day trip. Okay, oh, no, we're telling like, you how do you do it. How do you pack for a 10-day trip with a carry-on? And then his then it the, his joke went in the direction of his wife and how this would be impossible with his wife because his wife lays out 20 outfits. And he says, men don't have outfits. He says, I've got three or four things that are essential, underwear, socks, an extra pair of jeans, except in case I spill something on them. Yeah, that'd be better. And a couple shirts. Easy to do on a carry on. A carry on. Yeah. But uh, he was talking about his wife and how she had 20 outfits. And, you know, she'd ask him, do you like this one? And he goes, no. He goes, well, why not? And this becomes each one of these 20 outfits gets criticized. And it was so relatable to me, especially with my wife and the way she is when we travel. And it's just exactly the same. It's exactly the it same. It was right down. You, you was like he was reading your mail. Yes, yes, and uh, you know he really, really is a funny guy. Yeah. He's he's yeah. evolved. He's evolved. He doesn't lean on the redneck jokes as much. More of this everyday life. Maybe it's for a different crowd too. Maybe when he goes into a yeah. different you know venue or whatever, he can. He kinda... did. He did go down the road with uh, his kidney stones and the kidney stone story. Uh, but he was passing a kidney stone. Yes, God, I thought uh, I was passing one this morning. Seriously. Yeah. My back was aching in the middle of the night. But yeah, anyway. well, he was talking about how he had to pass the kidney stone, and he got he got it as graphic as he could in front of an audience like that. Right. And it was very, very funny. But I know a couple people there just didn't laugh at some of those jokes. But better than Jay Leno. Yeah. Jay Leno was there several years ago. and he, Oh, really? Yeah, and he had – there was a lot of silent – a lot of crickets Is that during right? his jokes. Yeah, Foxworthy – Constant laughter, yeah. great event, great, 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 great event, a great cause. I've been involved with the youth home for, gosh, about 14 years now. And, uh, you know, a lot of people you know were there, and it was oh, yeah. it was fun. It I was had fun. a prior event, otherwise I would have been there. Uh, a friend of ours, Cecil, invited me, and yeah. I, could, I told Cecil I couldn't make it. I ended up in Baltimore at the B&O uh, Railroad Museum. Have you ever you know you ever heard anything about that? I, I, I know there's several. I know I know a guy who's really into the railroad history and railroad museums. A season ticket holder, Magnus, who's a friend of mine, and he uh, he's really a lot of people are into that kind of history. Yeah. Well, and my so. dad was a railroader, and it was interesting. I went over there. Uh, I was a guest uh, with uh, my my doctor. Who I'm half Czech, and I've got a Czech woman who's my doctor, and she's just a, she's just a. You know, just one of those persons that makes you laugh constantly. Right. And anyway, she invited us because her husband works for the University of Maryland Medical. He's he too is an oncologist over there. But I had it, it was a very interesting evening uh, at the they, museum. What's that? Yeah, exactly. And the, you know, cause what I didn't realize, and because my dad was a railroader, but he always talked about a roundhouse, and I'd never been in one. But that, this museum is, is in the roundhouse that used to be there for the B&O Railroad, which goes way back to, I think that railroad must have started in the early 19th century. Wow. Because I, I believe they're the ones that finally pushed a tunnel through the, uh, uh, through the area over there between, over around, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Brunswick, Maryland, and you get to get over to, um, 
uh, what do you call it, Charles Charlestown, West Virginia. Right. When they did that, they they when they got the railroad went through, well, that kind of made the uh, CNO Canal obsolete. Right. So, but the, they've been around forever. But the the the, the uh, what do you call it, a roundhouse where the trains would pull in, and there, it's like the spokes of a wheel. They would pull in on this table, basically like a round table that you used to put records on, and they can turn, and then they did the work on the engine, but they can turn that engine any direction they want and send it back out in the yard to pick up another load of cars and take it someplace else. So that's else. what a roundhouse is. That's what a roundhouse is. Yeah, it's like a big lazy Susan for the... Yes, uh, exactly what it is for, 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 the for, for a locomotive. Pull yeah. a locomotive up on the lazy Susan. and 1828. 1828. Yeah, I said, well, that's fairly early, right? It's remarkable. Probably have the same tracks out there now, don't they? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, that the, 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 and there that tunnel is still there. Or I do think they don't use it anymore. They found another route. Oldest railroad in the United States is the BNO Railroad. Yeah, Baltimore, Baltimore Ohio. Ohio. That's it. They must have cut a big hole to get to Pittsburgh, huh? There, well, a couple once they got through there, I think they basically they followed the Potomac River to a certain point. And after that, I don't know exactly where. Because I fished up in there. With the Trans Appalachian settlers and their ability to trade. Yep, that's what it was. Just off the top of your head, you know that, huh? Yeah, and they had a Conestoga. They, they had a. They had a Conestoga, Conestoga wagon in there. What do you guys recall? What that yeah. was? What's a Conestoga wagon? Conestoga, New York. That was is that, a, that's that thing that's got almost looks like it's Asian in design, Japanese design, because it's got the, the it's a covered wagon, you know, with a with a canvas covered wagon like you see in the old westerns and sure. all that stuff. But it's got kind of an arch in the middle of it, an, an upside down arch. I kind of, I kind of, it's only four that. feet wide. Interestingly enough, that day I literally was, and I, I forget how I got on it, but somehow it was because of the Studer, Studebaker Car Company. The Studebaker Car Company, which oh, I know what it was, it had something to do with the Mayor Buttigieg because it's in South Bend, Indiana. Studebaker Mansion is in South Bend, Indiana. Right, and that's where they're it's a great that's where restaurant they used to be. Studebaker cars up until yeah. 1963. Well, they got into the business. They originally made Conest Conestoga wagons, and these wagons to see one. I was like, I was reading it that day, and I go in there, and there's this Conestoga wagon. I said, Well, it must have meant to be. What I didn't get was. That wagon was only four feet wide. Can you imagine that? Small but, people back then. But that thing at home, 10,000 pounds. They were. That's yeah. true. You ever go in some of these homes around here, these log cabins that are, you know. They're like small. They're smaller people. Yeah. They're less than six feet. They didn't live as long four either. That's a little wider than that. But yeah, four feet wide. But this thing could haul, like I said, 10,000 pounds. And I think it took like a dozen oxen to pull one. That's not the wagon that settled the west, though. That's a different wagon. You oh. get the idea. Because it was too heavy. It wouldn't. It, it's uh -huh. a double wide. Double wide. <laughs> well, that would have been with the dune buggy wheels. <laughs> the Conestoga with the dune buggy wheels. Anyway, did you have, did, did you happen to watch any of the XFL? No, but let's uh, let's take a break and we'll get into that. Also, the Oscars. You're yes, a big Brad Pitt Oscar. fan, aren't you? We got Oscars. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right, we'll get to that in a second. Looking for another chance to win, hundred thousand dollars scratch a replay from the Virginia Lottery is exactly that. Now through March 31st, any non-winning Virginia Lottery scratcher offers a shot at winning $500 in the daily drawing or even $10,000 grand prize. Here's the lowdown. Any non-winning Virginia Lottery scratcher can be entered into a daily drawing. In each daily drawing, two players will win $500 each. Every entry into the daily drawing is automatically entered into the grand prize drawing, which is set for April 7th. So if you don't have a winning ticket, you still could be a winner. On April 7th, one lucky player will win. $10,000. All entries must be entered either via VALottery.com slash replay or at the Virginia Lottery app. With the Virginia Lottery app, the fun doesn't stop. If you don't win with your scratcher, just replay it with a $100,000 scratcher replay. Visit VALottery.com slash replay for more information. The odds of winning a prize in the 100K scratcher replay promotion depends on on the number of entries received. So that give you any real odds. It just depends no, on how many people are playing. I guess if two people are playing, you got one out of two chances, right? That's exact great math. That's I good. I can figure that out. Uh, I think I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> the weather's warm. You're going to slide through winter. Everything's going to be fine with your plumbing. And that's quite possible. It's very possible. But that's the old head in the sand approach. <laughs> if you're wrong, you're going to be really sorry. Why don't you give O'Connor Plumbing, my friends over there, give them a call, 833-RIGGLE-44. Let them come out and check out your plumbing. They'll do it, you know, they'll do a lot. Let me, they give you a 44-point plan. They come through, they check all this stuff out. If they see something, they'll mention it to you. If you want to do it, they'll do it. No high sales, none of that stuff. 833-RIGGLE-44, O'Connor Plumbing. Ladies and gentlemen, 
stand back and watch the Phoenix rise from the ashes. Stand back. It's Riggo the Diesel. That shall live in infamy forever. Yes. Totally humiliation every time. Stand back. Anyway, uh, a lot, yeah, exactly, a lot going on this weekend. You had XFL, you had Oscars. Oscars last night, I, I've kind of lost it for the Oscars. Now, what was really weird, though, is I did have them on. We were just finishing dinner, and we had the TV on, and I see this old guy with white hair and this fairly young black guy. I know who the black guy is, Chris Rock. I could not for the longest time figure out who the white guy was, and it turns out it was uh, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. But he didn't, Rock. I didn't think, did you think it looked like Steve Martin? I yeah, mean, I thought it, so. I thought I, so. I didn't hear his voice or anything, but I could, from where I was, I'm going, who is that guy? I don't know who that is. Uh, two of the greatest comedians of all time. And as they were introduced, I said, man, this is going to really be funny. Let me watch this. Let me get into this. And... It just in two minutes, three minutes, it was over. They, they really didn't. I, I didn't. I and they didn't, didn't watch really. The I, I didn't. What I could tell the, the the audience, they didn't elicit a lot of laughter from the audience either, did they? No, I, they, they had a couple good liners in there, but you know, it, it, nothing really that is that memorable. And both those guys are just super, super funny. I mean, a combination of those two guys. Yeah, you would think you could really just have a great show. And, and I think what the rush was was to get Brad Pitt up there for the ratings. I don't know because before you knew it, they had the the first award. And it was Brad Pitt. And he's got a mullet now, you know. I did not see that. I couldn't tell from where I was. But the lady swooned, and and he won. That was his first win, I think, right? Yeah, Yeah. I believe so. He's won as a producer, and I forget what it was. He's won an an Oscar. So good to see him win, you know. A guy's been putting, you know, he put a lot of time into it, obviously. And he's still still performing at a high level, as they say. How old would he be? Uh, He's probably 50. 50 something? He's probably 50. You know. But then they showed Marty Scorsese there. He... He's up there in age, and De Niro was there, and Pacino was right. there. The Irishman yeah, uh, and two of their, what was it, Pacino and uh, Pesci were up for Best Supporting Actor, I believe. Yes, they? And both they, of them. They, they, I, thought, I thought Pesci might get it. I mean, I don't know why. but Pesci wasn't I watched, even there. You watched both those movies, Irishman and uh, I did. I Once did. Upon a Time in Hollywood. I, I like the Irishman a lot, but what can I say? I'm just in the tank for Scorsese movies. I always have yeah, been. I agree. Big those De Niro fan as far as you know some of the great Performance he's put in, Taxi Drivers one, Deer Hunters another. I mean, it's just really. He did the Deer Hunter. Huh? Oh yeah, I did not know. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What was I going to say? You know what was really fascinating? I thought, and I didn't know that till this morning when I read. You know, the winners was for the best film, um, uh, Parasite, which is a, which is a, Korean South Korean movie, and it's subtitles. We were going to watch it the other night because my wife had heard a lot of things about it. And then when I found out it was subtitles, I went, God, I just don't have the energy to watch sub- subtitles. Well, that wears me out. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, I'm a member of SAG, and they, every year uh, during the holidays, they start. And, and you know what? Right. You get your DVDs. A lot right? of DVDs. I got a yeah. stack of DVDs. I got to catch up on them. I don't know if I have Parasite, though. I might have a Parasite, but I don't know if I have the movie Parasite. It's called John Riggins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it's uh, it's uh always interesting to watch the oscars and you know my wife my daughter there you know and the, you know what they're going to want to watch they watch the red carpet they want to yeah see exactly that's what we had to put on we had that on for an hour so charlie far. she still looks so beautiful who's and that Scarlett oh, Johansson, charlie. you know and that's just you know not exactly my favorite viewing you know the red carpet as people are walking in you know I'm, that's why you know it, it's funny without football the xfl is going to try to fill that void and they had remarkable luck with the weather yesterday because those games, Saturday and Sunday, they could have been zero-degree snow-covered games. And it was 45 degrees and sunny for the game in D.C. and for the game in New York. Yeah, they play at Audi you know? Stadium. Is that where it is? Audi Stadium. Where, is that the soccer field? where D.C. Field? United plays down there. It's a beautiful spot. And it looked like they had about half half full, maybe out of. And I think it's a 20,000-seat yeah. 20, venue. Yeah. And, and you know, again, I was – I was pleased when I watched it in that there wasn't any wrestling shtick that was associated with the games because the XFL, the beginning XFL, you might remember, they oh. had, you know, Vince McMahon would be screaming and they'd have the cheerleaders out there. They had all kinds of wrestling. They had real wrestling announcers doing the games. Jim oh, Ross right. did the games. Who? Jim Ross, who's a famous wrestling announcer. Well, and they had, uh, what's his name, Minnesota Governor, Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura did it. He, was, a, he was doing the color He was a commentary. former wrestler. But, but for the XFL, standard crews, they, they, it was, 
I think they maybe didn't have as many cameras because a couple of replays didn't look quite right. They missed the ball a couple times. What do you, what do you think about the sideline reporting and, and the access that they gave these guys, which basically was unlimited? I think it was overdone. I think that some of the guys, they were chasing guys right after scoring touch. They're out of breath, and they really didn't want to talk. The kicker missed you know? the field goal, and then we've got to go in. And, and they had the uh, – uh, you saw the entire halftime of the other team's locker room or whatever. And I said, "What's why couldn't why couldn't the other team just watch what they're talking about?" I was I was struck by one thing, Rigo, and this is you know one thing I did like was the fact that you could hear the coach call the plays, and they'd call the play, and you'd hear him, and they'd have a shot of the coach, and he'd be calling the play, and then they show a shot of the quarterback, and all the helmet communica- communications you could hear it, but Jim Zorn was. I mean, listen, everybody in the United States who's watching that game is getting the play call, but he still is inclined to cover his mouth like they do. Like he doesn't want anybody to read his lips, but you can hear everything he's saying. It was kind of weird. Well, let me ask you this then. If you're up there in the press box or, you know, where the coaches sit and you're the defensive whatever defensive personnel they have up there. You watch TV. Are you watching TV yeah. and, and is there a delay though so that you don't you're not getting the signal at the same at the well, same I don't time? Know enough about it, but hey, to me. Well, because Astros, they did, they had a pretty good little system <laughs> in place. <laughs> oh. Who? Houston Astros. Oh, true. I yeah. haven't read much about that. But but uh TCAT was saying that uh they did some stuff like after plays, that was a little bit on the tawdry the side. And the gyrations. Ah, come on. Let's, let the guys have some fun. Just this game there, but yesterday, you know, with the handful of series. But to me, the bottom line is how much football was too much football. Well, football. yeah. yeah. And, and you know, when, and yeah. that, that would be my question since you did watch a little bit of it, is just your first, you know, at first blush. Is there a future for this league or is this another one? Because well, what I read was unlike the AAF. That folded what about after week six or seven? Yeah. What was it last year? Last yeah. spring, I think it was. Yeah, Twelve months. Ago. Uh, that that they away. say, well, and it's true. You know, McMahon's got a lot of money. I'm sure he's got partners. I mean, we're talking about billions here, where they can keep throwing money. They got TV contracts. I mean, to me, I just I'm like you. There's it's always going to be the B team at best, and the fact that the fact that you've got somebody an impresario in Vince McMahon who really has developed WWE into one of the top grossing entertainment companies in the country. That and that and that's a and this is where it gets weird for me. That's a I, I, I he was indicted about twenty years ago on uh steroids you know use not himself but you know with his business or whatever. I don't know exact details but because I, I know it was in federal court and it, and it was out in Long Island. I was living in New York at the time. He was acquitted or whatever, you know, the charges were dropped, I forget. But you have to. You mean your own your your own? What do you call it? Intelligence tells you that professional wrestlers use steroids. I would I would dare say that you'd be hard pressed. I think they've, got, to think I think they they've got some kind of policy in place now. I mean, I I know I know that depending on where you're, I guess they're subject to the state regulatory commissions in the states that they perform in, and if they are, then they would be they would be you know, testable. But you I, never I, hear of it. You never hear of a no, WWE just, drug policy. They just suspended some guy. They just suspended some guy for violating their wellness policy. So I do think their what policy? Wellness policy. Their wellness policy. So I think they do have uh, some type of. But you know, you take a look at the football. I mean that. I still find that hard to believe, personally, that there isn't some kind of drug usage and that they're what do you call it? I mean, you take the NFL and and you know, they, they're the gold standard. But there's still no test for HGH. Well, it'd be naive to think that 100 percent of all pro athletes are, are clean. I That's mean, you my see point. it. You see it happen all the time. It depends on uh, how stringent their testing is. You know, National Football League's got some pretty I stringent they, testing. I think basically, Larry, they just smell your breath, <laughs> and they go, "Nope, I don't smell any steroids. You smell any steroids? We're good. Okay, okay, we'll get well, down the road." I, I want to continue this conversation, okay. okay, in a second, and and but I got to get this in connect okay. with the Redskins this off season. Follow at Redskins on Instagram and Twitter for team news, updates, and exclusive Redskins content. Did you know that your Washington Redskins are sponsored by Coke Industries? Yes, they are. That's K-O-C-H Coke. 67,000 U.S. employees making a lot of things that make game day better. Greener turf, they make that. Stronger paper products. For tailgating, they make that too. And oh yes, electronic components in TVs and smart devices so you can watch the Redskins win 
anywhere, anytime. Yeah, Coke makes that too. See all they make for on and off the field at KOCHmakesthat.com. And whether on the field or in the classroom, the Washington Redskins believe learning should be fun. That's why we've partnered with youth entrepreneurs. I always say youth. I don't know why I say that. <laughs> youth entrepreneurs to bring their engaging hands-on style of learning to classrooms in the D.C. metro area. Youth entrepreneurs curriculum was created by educators for educators. That means it's flexible, fun, and absolutely free. To learn more about youth entrepreneurs and how to experience it for yourself, visit getye.org. Hey, I'm bored, I'm broke, and I'm back. Who's bored? Who's broke? And who's back? I wanted to always see the Redwoods. I wanted to see the Rocky Mountains. I wanted to see the Painted Desert, the Petrified Forest, the Grand Canyon. That was like the land that I always wanted to go to. John Riggins. Well, uh, let's be honest. What I really wanted to see was the Gurley Show. But... <laughs> And you're still waiting to go. Uh, the circus had come to town. Oh, the circus carnival. And I, over at Frankfurt, they had one years ago, but I was like 14 years old. And I'm sorry, son, you're too young. Uh, who, wow. knows what, who knows what they did in well, there? Hey, what would you make of Bobby Knight going back to Indiana? Did you happen to see that? No, I didn't. But did you, you know, hear I about did, that? I did a show with him when I was doing Rigo on the Range. I remember that. And then, you know, about a year and a half ago, the rumor came out that he wasn't doing well. Yeah, did you, did you know good. that? I didn't know that until so I saw anyway, the story. So anyway, tell me, because I'm curious. So, so he returned after, gosh, an absence of 20 years and right. swore he'd never go back. Correct. And he really, really hated the people there. Miles Brand was the guy he yep. hated the most. And yeah, he uh, passed away, and most of these people are, are no longer with us. And then I guess it was the former Wizards coach, Randy Whitman, who I remember him as a player for Coach Knight. They had a celebration of some of the national championship teams, and Isaiah Thomas was there, and Quinn Buckner was there, Scott May was there, all these names from the past. And there he was, finally back at Alumni Fieldhouse, whatever they call it there, in Bloomington, Bobby Knight. And they say he had returned to town uh, for some medical treatment. He's been there for a while now. And that uh, Randy Whitman explained to him, hey, look, you know, people love you. you got to come t- take a bow. And he did. He didn't look well. He was very emotional. And I remember, So he did speak a little bit. I didn't hear him speak at all. Oh. I didn't see a single yeah, quote see, from I him. Yeah, see, I think that – I think he may be so, – I don't know. But I think the rumor is it like uh, Alzheimer's or something along those lines. Yeah, he, you know, and, and he. Which I never, you know, I did that show with him in the spring of 2013, but obviously this stuff, which is, you know, seven years. Well, this guy had years. a, this guy's brain. I mean, I, I it just, hard, that's sad because I can tell you a personal story about Bobby Knight, and this is going to take you way back. 1984, the Olympics were in Los Angeles. You weren't working with us then, were you? My very first summer. 84. Summer Olympics in LA. And we had a whole series that we did, Rafer Johnson. And we had a, 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 a gymnast. We had Cynthia Potter for diving. We had all these former Olympians who did these short radio series. And Bobby Knight did the basketball series. And I worked with him for one year. I saw him like, gosh, it must have been 2002, 2003. I hadn't seen him for almost 20 years in an airport. Remember my name. Remembered everything about it. Remember John Shannon? who used to be the department head back then at Westwood, he remembered everything. He just was sharp as a tack. So, you know, it's it, you know it's horrible disease, Alzheimer's, that, and if that is, in fact, what he has, I mean, I don't know, but it was it was Yeah, I don't want to start project. a rumor, but I, the, supposedly he's, he wasn't doing well. I'll tell you what was interesting, though. We did the show up at uh, a friend of mine's lodge up on the Quijack River in Alaska. We was up there fishing for rainbow trout. Bobby Knight is a huge fisherman. He yeah. loves to fish. And it was interesting because obviously I'm, you know, was the guy, the host of the show. So I'm on the same boat with Bobby. As soon as we started fishing, I I figured out very quickly why he has won (laughs) as much as he has won, how he operates the way he operates. He didn't even know I was on the boat. And he was just like a bird dog looking and casting and cat. I mean, this guy was so intent. I was going, whoa, I need a beer. I need a beer. Hey, Bobby, that was supposed to interact a little for the yeah, show. Exactly. He was there to catch fish. Did he catch them? It was, oh, yeah. I mean, but it was, it was amazing. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't great fishing, but this guy wasn't letting that slow him down. I mean, I never, I mean, with me, I go, if the fishing ain't any better than this. I'm going, like, yeah, give me a beer. I'm, I'm going to take a little break here. He fished, I mean, he fished hard. <laughs> Well, like him or not, you know, people have their opinions. I like him. And to see him go back after kind of closure yeah, for him. Yeah, exactly. And, his and he pl- said the he- love his players showed him, it was just really very emotional. He got him. You could see he was crying. Some of the players, Isaiah Thomas was crying. Because, you know, 
It's been a long time since he's been back there. What and, year was that, that that he had that run with Thomas? Was that back in the 80s? I oh, think it was. I would say 81. Yeah. yeah. Early 80s. 80, 81. Almost 40 years with ago. Him with play backcourt with him. 81. Uh, and I'll tell you what happened. In that, I want to say, in that national championship game was at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, and I think it was North Carolina against Indiana. Reagan had been shot. And Reagan got shot. What, that day or that uh, week? That day. And I remember – they were going back and forth as to whether they were going to postpone the game or not. And I remember being in there, kind of nose my way in there. I was working, you know, for Westwood there, and we were doing a game. And I was in the bowels of the building there, and they were going back and forth. They were deciding whether they were going to play the game. And uh, and then Reagan, I, I get that's why Ronald Reagan, you know, there's a line, I'd rather be in Philadelphia, and that's where the game was. And that's what he said, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. I don't know if he had been planning to go there or not. But when he was out of the woods, I guess they figured we might as well play the game. So, well, and Indiana won. But but back to the XFL. Do you think this has any chance of surviving? That's what I was going to ask you. I, you know, I don't know as, at, at what level. I mean, in other words, is it supposed to be profitable? I think that, you know, what you said, there was 10,000 fans maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they, they announced more, it but it half. looked like it was half full. But, you know, it, it yeah. sounded loud. It was enthusiastic. I don't see. I don't, personally, I don't get it. But then that's just me. Because I don't see how you're ever going to get – I mean, let's let's project twenty five years from now. Are they going to have the same kind of talent that the NFL has? I wouldn't think so, because mm-hmm. how you can't build up your piggy bank that quickly. It took the NFL a hundred years to get where they are. Yeah, right? they're a hundred years behind. Yeah, huh? that's, yeah, that's it's a been hell of a head years. start to give somebody. And but, but of course, you know, you can you can be a quick study too, because nowadays with all the means of uh, what do you call it, the distribution systems for the entertainment or whatever it is that you have, I don't know. But my my guess is, I I would doubt it, and and part of it is because. How do you break that tie between, as Todd was saying, some of the stuff, at least in his opinion, I guess, as far as the, you know, after you make a play and, you know, and did, did, I thought you said it, it, it wasn't necessarily a mandate, but basically it was, hey, the sky's the limit on what you can do with your well, clearly, celebrations. Clearly, with, you Would, know, they want to be the anti NFL, a lot of regard for some of the rule changes and the special kickoffs and punts, kickoffs. Yeah, I, I mean, it yeah, takes some getting mean, used to. Yeah. How about how about the extra points choices you have? Oh, right. I found that you know? after I read that. What you get uh, one point if you go through it, and it's from the two, two, and five, then, and ten. I think right. It's it's yeah. one, two, and three. You get yeah. a three point. Three point if you go for it from the ten. Yeah. Which is an interesting proposition. I would think it's going to cause the coaches to do a lot of extra thinking. I mean, well, seriously, and also it'd be the, whatever the, the software program they have to do that. I mean, to me, I'm thinking, oh, whoa, well, the NFL adopt something like that, and I'm thinking, well, wouldn't that kind of negate the you know the the hard work it takes to get up and down and score a touchdown if it's you true. score two and the other team can get six points off a. Of, Trying to, well, maybe not. You're not going to out NFL the NFL, okay? You're not going to out. Nah. So you're saying you got to do things different, right? Or, you got to. I agree with or that. Or do you just make it more like a minor league farm system, and 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 do it that way, like minor league baseball is thrives in many towns throughout the Great Land here versus. That's true. If you're trying to compete. You're not. You can't. But they're local, Todd. Would people watch minor league baseball? And yeah, there are people who would. But would it be profitable? To, to actually be, you know, what do you call it, putting that type of entertainment on TV and expecting the nation to be watching this, minor league baseball, when you've got major league baseball. In other words, in the off season, we'll say, and that would be the time. There are a certain amount of people that love it so much they would, but would it's almost like seasonal, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's, you know. It's, ritual, it's become ritual and habit in this country. Yeah, but they're wedging, this, they're wedging the XF, XFL in at the end of regular football, so there's no break because the Super Bowl just happened last right. week, and it ends. It's a ten week season. It ends before baseball really gets rolling. So they're trying to fit it in there, unlike the USFL, which was a summer league. Versus, do we really think with college football Saturday starting in August, the NFL starts in September? You got six months of football. Is there enough people out there that want right? Minor league football is what it is. Well, you know, well, and you think about it, college football is minor league football. Well, it's yeah. all said and done, and they're they're on the field. It's set for the, the love of football, you know. So this, it is a different take. They don't have all the wrestling shtick. They want it to be football. They say you need some football, right? You missing football already? It's good marketing, you know. Football's over. Well, we're here. What are you going to do? And and I bet you they had some people watch. The question obviously becomes: Give me three weeks. See where we're at in three weeks. 
How, how many people are still going to be watching? How many people are still going to be attending? The attendance in the games I saw yesterday was terrible. Yeah, but those are big stadiums. Stands, I mean, but still, yeah. again, like you say, staying power. Hey, if you open up a new restaurant, the grand opening your first week, everybody. If you don't have a crowd the first week, then you really don't have anything. Right. Yeah. See what kind of staying power they got? They That's got it. The TV money behind them. They got the uh, they got the big boys supporting them and promoting the living heck out of it. Well, your option last night on TV, I, I, the bowling was on. Right. The bowling, bowling was back. on the network. Yeah. It was, I, I think, think it was on huge Fox. in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, I don't know if trying to bring it back a little bit. We're trying to bring bowling back a little bit. Don Golf Carter, at Pebble elbow. Beach. Don Carter. The stiff elbow. Pe- hey. The Pebble Beach. Before we take off, some stuff going on here this week. Ron Rivera yeah. has a big all-up meeting with all the coaches, kind of plot the future of the Yeah, you know, coach, coach told us at the Super Bowl that, you know, uh, this week, starting this week, they get together and start setting their core of the team, looking at the players that are under contract and determining who the you know who the core players are. And a guy like Terry McLaurin would be just that, a player you know is going to fit in. And then you look at some of your secondary players, then you look at positions of need. And it's very systematic. The coaching staff had been out uh, just for a brief time, uh, but the scouts have been here for the last week. And they've been going over all the reports. And I think this is, again, indicative of the way the coach is going to run this very systematic very well thought out very organized person by person position by position and because you know coming up in march march 18th not that far away start a free agency yeah. you're going to be and and the staff is going to depart for the combine at the end of the month so now's the time over the next couple of weeks they're going to dive heavy into the uh into the veterans on the roster and you're not going to hear anything about it Right. But, you but know, a lot of work is going to be going they on will set, You will hear the results come middle of March as we find out, you know, players who might be a free agent of the Redskins, whether they're coming back or whether they're not, who's going to get a contract, what positions uh, are they going to go after, what positions right. do they need, and then you got the draft afterwards. So very impressive, the organization uh, that he has put in in such a short period of time. And and this is a big week. I think this is the week they're they're probably meeting right now as yeah, we're I, that's what I, as we're taping this. What I heard on the radio, position by position on the roster, and and then they'll just keep moving moving that progress progression down the road till we hit free agency. And OTAs will be here before you know it. All right, Larry, thank you. We'll see you next week. Well done, sir. When you scratch and you don't win. One hundred K scratch a replay. Say what? It's the Virginia Lottery 100K Scratcher Replay. If I scratch and I don't win, I could still win? That's right. Now through March 31st, enter any non-winning Virginia Lottery Scratcher for a chance to win one of two daily $500 prizes or the $10,000 grand prize. Visit valottery.com slash replay for details. 100K Scratcher Replay. Odds of winning a prize depend on the number of entries received. Winter is the season for adventure. And if you want a car as exciting as your lifestyle, then it has to be an all-wheel drive Honda SUV. With more features, the CRV has standard Honda sensing, more room for friends, the pilot has seating for eight, more comfort, the HRV has available heated seats, and more rugged. The Passport is built for adventure with ample cargo space and hidden storage compartments. Winter adventure is calling, and Honda is ready to answer. See your local Honda dealer today. Dear customer service, I can always count on Novak. My power is always on, my payments always go through, and Novak actually cares about the community they serve. Dear Novak, your electric costs are reasonable. Some electricity is from alternative sources, and cost reductions are passed along during the year. Thanks. Novak, power you can count on. Hey, Redskins Nation, this is the old pro Daryl Green. How many of you out there are tired of dealing with the big banks who answer your phones with that dreaded recording? Press 1, press 2, press 3. If you want personal customer service, I recommend giving Main Street Bank a call. I promise you, your call will be answered by a person and not a robot. And you'll be treated with the courtesy you deserve. I know, I'm a founding director of Main Street Bank. So try us out. Visit mstreetbank.com. We bank where you breathe. Member FDIC.